Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. From First Paw Media, sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company, this is the Dog Driver Show. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert and I'm here with my co-host KP and we are the Dog Driver Show and I'm excited to have our guests on today for, for two reasons. First, it is I believe our first guest from Italy and second, this is our first show of 2021. I hope that it is a much better year for everyone in uh, in the sport of, of dog sledding, but also everyone around the world. I hope we get through this much better than we did last year. Uh, KP, who do we have today? Uh, today we have uh, someone very special that actually I uh, know from long, long, long time ago. It doesn't make him or me younger. Uh, it's approximately 30 years ago that I met uh, Giuseppe Bombarderi from Italy in Fairbanks, Alaska, actually. Uh, Giuseppe, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, thank you for uh, being here with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you started in the sled dog sport. Allora, dici come hai cominciato e un po' chi sei e come hai cominciato. Come? Come, come hai cominciato? Parla un po' di te e poi ah. come hai cominciato. Ok, ho iniziato nell'87 con uh, Siberian Aschi perché faccio sci alpinismo e ho conosciuto lo Sledog e da allora è stata la mia rovina, in <laughs> sostanza. Ok, he started in uh, 1987. Uh, he was passionate about skiing and uh, he started with a Siberian Husky and uh, from that moment on uh, uh, he fell in love with Sled Dog so that's how it started uh, In 1987 the Sled Dog sport was probably very new in Italy as uh, I lived in France in 1987 and I had actually the first uh, Siberian Husky and that's when I started also how did he evolve from one Siberian Husky to world champions? Eh, come è stato il passaggio dall'avere un solo Siberian Husky fino a diventare campione del mondo? Allora, in sostanza, da un Siberian Husky sono diventati sei Siberian Husky nel giro di un anno. E nel 90 ho visto il primo campionato del mondo a Silva Plana e Dico, ho detto devo correre anch'io e allora da lì sono passato agli Alaska Naschi dagli Alaska Naschi e poi siamo andati a finire agli Hound agli Euro Hound e per vincere il campionato del mondo poi ok uh, so in a year um, in a year time he uh, uh, he uh, bought uh, six Siberian Huskies uh, starting from one and uh, in 1990, he saw the Silva Plana uh, Silva San Moritz. in San Moritz, so the, the, um, the competition. The FSS World Championship. Yeah, so this the first, championship. The first <laughs> World Championship, the FSS. And uh, he thought, uh, I really must do that. So uh, from the uh, Siberian Husky, he moved on to Alaskan Huskies and then uh, to Eurohounds. Um, and uh, you use the, uh, those dogs to win the championship. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, uh, we raced uh, in Seals, uh, Silva Plana also uh, when we lived uh, out there. Uh, 
Uh, how do you prepare your dog team? Uh, I believe uh, Giuseppe lives in the uh, northern Italy, uh, very close to uh, Switzerland. How do you prepare your dog team for world championships? Allora, anche loro hanno fatto quello di Silva Plana mm -hmm. e ti chiede come uh, prepari i cani, come train uh, i cani per uh, la championship. Praticamente dalla data appunto della data che è importante del campionato, scaliamo indietro 21 settimane, al che iniziamo con un ciclo di resistenza, un ciclo di forza, un ciclo di velocità, per poi passare all'ultimo ciclo che sono le gare, e per coincidere appunto con la, la data del campionato che ci interessa, europeo o mondiale. In, in grosso modo è questo l'allenamento che seguiamo. Uh, so before uh, a competition, uh, they usually start training the dogs uh, uh, 21 uh, weeks earlier. So uh, they have uh, uh, three main uh, um, cycles of trainings uh, that uh, uh, focus on resistance, uh, strength and speed. And uh, the last step, of course, are competitions. So at the end of this kind of training, there will be all the competitions. And they start with the most important competition. They count as weeks from the, the date of that year. Comunque tutto l'anno noi alleniamo i cani anche per il by joring, perché abbiamo le competizioni in settembre e ottobre di by joring, per cui tutto l'anno vengono comunque allenati i cani e facciamo anche molto free run con la e-bike. Uh, of course the training, uh, uh, some kind of training uh, lasts uh, all, all year long. So uh, they usually uh, train dogs uh, with bike drawing and uh, especially in September and October. And uh, also they do the free, free, oh, uh, the free? Uh, free run. 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 Yeah, so the dogs can. Free uh, bike. With an e-bike. They do free ride with a. Uh, Free run with a knee bike. So uh, in 1993, Giuseppe came to Fairbanks uh, for the World Championship. Uh, to ask him about his experience coming um, to Alaska. Eh, nel 93 sei andato a Fairbanks. Come è stata la tua esperienza con l'Alaska? Eh, indimenticabile. Allora, <laughs> atterrato all'aeroporto di Fairbanks, è arrivato a prendermi George Atla. Grazie a un invito che mi ha fatto Bob Levorsen per ospitarmi a casa di Giorgiata per tutto il periodo dei campionati del mondo. Ma è stata una cosa indimenticabile perché ho fatto una notte e poi siamo andati in albergo. Era impossibile <laughs> abitare a casa di Giorgiata. So, uh, he said that this was simply unforgettable. Uh, when he landed uh, in Fairbex, uh, George Atla uh, went and uh, uh, got him uh, because he was uh, invited by uh, Bob Levorsen. Bob Levorsen. Uh, quindi sei stato da Bob Levorsen? No, ah, okay. uh, because he, um, he was going to stay at uh, George Atla's place uh, during uh, his, uh, uh, his uh, time in Alaska. And uh, uh, the most uh, funny thing about this experience is that uh, uh, they couldn't uh, really sleep uh, there because it was so chaotic that they had to uh, get a room uh, in a hotel because, of course, uh, George Atlas' house was really, really noisy. And very busy, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I believe uh, Giuseppe... Uh, 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 is doing a lot of uh, dry land races right now. Is he still planning to do the uh, competition on snow at the highest level? Uh, se uh, vorresti, scusate, prima, adesso stai facendo soprattutto dry land, mm. che credo sì. niente neve. E se invece vorresti ancora andare avanti anche con la neve? Sì, sì, sono, abbiamo ricominciato anche con la neve e quest'anno volevamo andare in Svezia per i campionati IFSS del mondo ma purtroppo causa Covid tutto annullato. Comunque sì, ritornerò, sto ritornando a correre sia in quattro che in sei cani. Uh, yes, he's going, he really likes uh, running on snow, so he's going back to uh, this kind of um, 
this kind of land. And uh, he started again training. And of course, they wanted to uh, attend a championship in Sweden. Uh, that, of course, was um, postponed at least uh, for the uh, COVID uh, uh, situation. And uh, they are training uh, with four or six dogs at the moment. Very good, very good. Uh, tell, uh, ask Giuseppe about his dogs. Uh, what are, uh, where are his dogs from and what is the background behind the dogs that he has currently? Allora, eh, sui cani, da dove vengono i tuoi cani e il background dei cani? Allora, sono mh, metà hound, metà greste, cioè abbiamo 12 cani in casa, okay. che vivono in casa, di cui sono 5 greser e 7 hound. Giusto? Eh, ok, e arrivano, sono gli hound, sono Scandinavian hound, e arrivano, e arrivano quasi tutti da Gunther de Bacher. Da, anche da lui. Eh sì, da de Stefan Donker dall'Olanda. E, e basta, gli altri più alcuni vecchi e due cuccioli. Di Greister? No, di Aung. Ah, ok. Allora, intanto traduco sì. questo. Ok, so uh, they currently have 12, do- 12 dogs that they all keep in the house. So it's a bit challenging and uh, um, they have seven hounds and uh, uh, they are all Scandinavian hounds and uh, they come from uh, um, uh, Gunther de Bakker okay uh, and uh, uh, Stefan Donker from Holland uh, and they also have a five Greyster Greyster e Greyster anche loro da Gunther They were also, also the Greyster were bred by Gunther, the Bakker, and uh, some of them are, uh, they have some kind of mixed breeding uh, with... Uh, um, Czech Republic. Yes, Czech In Republic. Poland, uh, Poland line. Yeah, so there are a bit of a... Lena Boysen line. Yeah, okay. Okay, I uh, know Thanks. both Stefan and... Uh, and Gunther uh, very well, our friends also. Uh, uh, how are you preparing uh, uh, the transition? Let me ask it actually better. Uh, from 1987, where he started with the Siberian Husky till today, uh, you know, that's a long time, like a lot of our old timers we call ourselves. Uh, how does he see sport evolving from the late 80s to now, the evolution? Dall'87 a oggi come si è evoluto lo sport? Oh, tantissimo. Nel 87 correvamo con slitte di legno e adesso corriamo con slitte in alluminio e carbonio. Le velocità sono aumentate tantissimo. Dai siberiani che facevamo medie di 22-23 km orari, che sarebbero circa 15-16 miglia, allora... Adesso siamo passati a 30-33 di media su una categoria 6 cani, che sono, che sono 18. Poi soprattutto la, il rapporto che, che si ha con i cani siberiani, erano cani abbastanza selvatici, che, che li trattavi, li potevi tenere in canile, tenere alla catena. Questi qui sono cani che vivono in casa, molto socievoli, vivono tutti assieme, dormono tutti assieme. E non ti non litigano. Ecco, se vuoi Ok. Uh, so you think it's, uh, it has changed a lot. Uh, also uh, just thinking about uh, uh, like the equipment uh, in uh, 1987 they had wooden sleds and now they are made of aluminum and uh, uh, carbonium. So it changed a lot. And also the main difference is in the speed. Uh, because uh, in 1987, uh, the average speed was uh, about uh, 22 kilometers per hour, something like uh, 15, 16 miles per hour. And now it's uh, 30 to uh, 33 kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. So it changed a lot. And also uh, another difference is in the behavior or the attitude of the dogs. Because uh, when they had Siberian Huskies, they were more... Um, Yeah, they, they were more like free, they, they weren't really pets. 
uh, they uh, couldn't really get that used to human um, uh, company. Uh, whereas uh, uh, these dogs, the dogs that they have now, are more sociable and they uh, can live in a house uh, uh, in kind of a normal way. So they changed a lot. Yeah. I, I hear from a lot of people saying that Siberian Huskies are more independent compared to the hounds that we have. They are more free-spirited uh, uh, dogs. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the world championship that he won, um, what type of dog team he had when he won the uh, world championship? Che cani avevi quando hai vinto il mondiale? Eh, avevo quattro hound di Eggie Lellis nel team e due era Scandinavian hound di Eggie Lellis e due hound, European hound di Kriegler dalla Germania. Eggie Lellis. Eggie Lellis. Eggie Lellis. Okay, so <laughs> he says that of course you will know who is talking about. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> Even in Italian, I know. <laughs> So he had uh, uh, four Scandinavian hounds uh, of Agil and... Agil Ellis. Agil Ellis, <laughs> <one>. yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, how many European? One, two European. Wait. And two European hounds. Uh, from Krigler. Krigler. Yeah, okay. No, it's funny because I laugh because uh, when we are talking sled dog sport, even if Giuseppe speaks Italian, half of it, <laughs> half of it we don't understand because of the name and the terminology. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's a good thing. Definitely. <laughs> it's universal. Definitely. Ah, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, uh, for the uh, uh, dry land events, uh, does he prepare the dogs different than for the snow events? Uh, la preparazione è diversa per la dry land rispetto alla, snow, alla neve? Sì, dry land, e soprattutto io corro in bike joring, è essenzialmente velocità, velocità pura. Però eh, abbiamo, cioè dopo, adesso ho capito che serve comunque la forza del traino anche nel bike-joring. Per cui eh, quest'anno abbiamo, come si può dire, dirottato gli allenamenti più che altro più sulla forza che neanche sulla velocità pura. Perché la velocità appunto i cani ce l'hanno già di natura, intrinseca. Ok, uh, so of course there are some differences. Uh, he thinks that uh, it trains on the dryland uh, doing bike drawing, uh, which focuses uh, most of all on the speed. But uh, now they started training also uh, for snow trails. So uh, they think that strength now is really needed. And so they, their focus shifted from speed to strength because they think that uh, uh, speed uh, is something that... Uh, uh, dogs somehow have uh, since they were born. It's something that they were born with, whereas strength uh, needs to be uh, trained a lot more. Infatti, abbiamo iniziato con i grester, pensando che servisse il grester, invece abbiamo poi, siamo ancora ritornati a Lound, perché Lound ha molta più desire to run, <laughs> e è più affidabile e comunque veloce e potente al pari del grester. Yeah, so that's the fact is that they started with bracer dogs, but uh, uh, then they came back to hounds because uh, uh, they have, uh, as he said, a lot of desire to run and uh, they are more uh, motivated. They have as much strength as the graces and they are more uh, focused on uh, the run. They are more uh, interested <laughs> in running. Uh, when I uh, uh, raced in the Alps, uh, uh, in the 90s uh, we had a lot of races in Italy uh, are there still a lot of races in the uh, Italian Alps or the, he has to travel to go to snow uh, negli anni 80-90 c'erano un sacco di corse nelle Alpi ma se ci sono ancora adesso se devi viaggiare solo in Svizzera sono restate al circuito di gare in Germania si sono ridotte tantissimo in Austria ne sono restate tre o quattro di gare e purtroppo devi, se vuoi correre bene devi spostarti in Svezia e in Norvegia o in Alaska. Sì, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the, um, the competitions here uh, 
as uh, have become fewer and fewer. And uh, in Switzerland, they still have uh, a lot of uh, trails, uh, but uh, in Germany, they are uh, way fewer than in the past, uh, in Austria as well. So if you want to really run uh, in a proper way, you need to go to, to Sweden or in uh, Norway or in Alaska, of yeah. course. <laughs> Okay. A dream. A dream. He, said. he should come back. <laughs> he should come back. <laughs> Di tornare. <laughs> Very good. He hopes so. <laughs> Very good, guys. Thank you very much for being on. I have a couple of questions um, before we go. My first question to you is, um, what do you think the future of the sport is uh, moving forward? Uh, you've been around a long time. You got started right before I did. And uh, I guess, as KP said, we're old timers. But where do you see the sport in 20 years or so? Come sarà fra vent'anni, secondo te, lo sport? Avete cominciato più o meno insieme? Sei da tanto nel giro, quindi... Eh, tra vent'anni. Dipenderà tanto la neve, come andrà il clima, la, il, il clima. condizioni climatiche, come saranno. Innanzitutto, a eh, me sembra che continuino solo a diminuire i masher in Europa almeno. È sempre più difficoltoso, sempre più costoso. Sono solo, sempre solo più problemi, la no? passione è tanta, ma le gare io vedo che siamo solo vecchi. <laughs> siamo sempre più vecchi e pochi giovani che iniziano. Ok, he says that in his opinion uh, a lot depends on uh, the snow, how uh, the snow will be in the future, how the climate situation will evolve. And uh, of course uh, he, he thinks that uh, uh, there is some kind of worsening in the uh sled dog uh, in, in this sport uh, uh the mushes are uh, fewer and fewer uh the sport has become more and more expensive more difficult of course if you have passion you can overcome everything but uh, um uh is in notice that uh, uh during competitions there are a lot of uh not old but uh, of course not so young mushers and uh um not as many young mushes as in the past. So we will see. Nel Bajoring in Canicross si sta evolvendo molto e crescerà molto perché è molto più facile. Hai bisogno meno cani, puoi correre tutto l'anno, mentre con lo sled dog, almeno qui in Europa, non vedo molto non positivo. Sì, yeah, he thinks that. Um, Maybe uh, bike drawing will have a better future, uh, especially here in Europe, because it's uh, less expensive, because you need less, fewer dogs, and uh, uh, you can practice it uh, all year long. So here, Sledog, uh, in his opinion, um, if nothing changes, uh, it might become a, a, a sport less and less practiced. Right, right. So my last question, my last question is the question I ask all of the guests, and that was if somebody new is getting involved, what would you tell them? One piece of advice. Allora, se qua ci vuoi arrivare un giovane che ha appena cominciato, qual è il consiglio che gli daresti? Un consiglio? Iniziare sicuramente con i cani giusti e e cambiare sport perché <laughs> 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 è una droga e quando ti entra nelle vene non puoi più smettere dopo <laughs> he says that he should uh, he or she should start with uh, the right dogs and uh, if it suggests uh, her or him not to uh, start uh, doing this sport because it's like a drug once it's in your veins <laughs> you can't ever stop so it's really dangerous <laughs> Right, very good. All right, uh, KP, anything else for uh, for these guys before we go? I uh, know Giuseppe wanted to thank you for spending the last uh, 30 minutes with us. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, to talk to you again. Uh, I remember you actually from uh, from 93 when you came to Alaska and raced. I think uh, I was racing uh, uh, six and four myself back then, uh, dog class. Uh, good luck with your training. Good luck with your races, and we'll be following thanks. you uh, on Facebook and the social media. Okay, thanks.
Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you. On, on behalf of our guests today and my co-host, KP, this is Robert for the Dog Driver Show. We will see you guys next time. Goodbye. From First Paw Media, this is the Dog Driver Show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you can see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media.